Joining me now, right here in Arizona, is Bram Resnick. He's a political reporter and anchor at KPNX, our NBC station right here in Phoenix. All right, Bram. He's a fan club out here. Maria Paletta is the state government and politics reporter at the Arizona Republic. She moderated the one and only debate uh, of, of the Senate race. And in Washington, my good friends Howard Feynman, an NBC News contributor, and Danny Pletka of the American Enterprise Institute, also an NBC News contributor. You guys get to be the cat callers and the actual hecklers of all of us here in Phoenix, Danny and, and Howard. But no offense, I'm going to start local, okay. then we're going to go to you guys for national. Uh, Ram, I want to play for you some chats I had with some voters about this race because it does seem as if Arizona's a bit shell shocked that they're in the battleground. Um, take a listen. Is the Senate race that we're seeing this year in the state, do you think that's emblematic of what politics is going to be like in the state for the next four or five years? I am afraid to say yes, because I hope not. It's been a rough race. But it was very rough. You said you uh, you don't focus on the national, you're tuning it out? Kind of, because it just seems just like, you know, a bunch of Twitter and, you know, a bunch of just garbage. Well, this is pushing you away. Yeah. Bram, I would say, and I have three or four more other voters that have said similar things to me. <laughs> They're just burned out on the negativity, and it, and it dawned on me, oh, Arizona's not experienced what a Floridian or an Ohioan has experienced over the years. Uh, Arizona now knows how Cleveland feels yes. every two, <laughs> two to four years. We're seeing record spending, not just in the Senate race, mm -hmm. but in ballot initiatives, congressional races, the governor's race, $100 million, which blows away any kind of spending we've seen before. The negative ads on the McSally side started, I think, the day after she won the primary. Mm -hmm. Kirsten Cinema in the, in the Senate race, Kirsten Cinema was up with positive ads back in April. Right. So this has been going on a long time, and right now, it is really, really intense. Maria, you moderated this, the one and only debate. And trust me, Bram and I wish it were more than that. No, no offense. We, we, we were hoping to get our hands at least on uh, a debate here. The amazing report from our reporter in the field, Vaughn Hilliard, was the two candidates sat there five minutes before the debate started and didn't even acknowledge each other. It's personal for these two, is it not? It, it absolutely is, and I think Bram alluded to that with the tone of some of the ads that we've seen, which both of them have criticized, but yet they're still on the airwaves, of course. It was um, not very warm between them before the debate. It wasn't anything nasty, but the, the photographers, videographers who were in there were trying to get them to engage, and they just were not playing ball. So, One thing that's also come through in talking with voters, even ones that I think have already decided who they're going to vote for, even the candidate they may vote for, they don't feel like they know either candidate. Uh, no, they don't. And look at Kirsten Cinema. Right now, this is Kirsten Cinema, circa 2018, running against Kirsten Cinema. 2002 to 2010. That's, that's, the, who, that's who McSally's trying to right. have her run against, right? And Kirsten uh, Cinema, Congresswoman Cinema, has not really put herself out there uh, for people like me, reporters. We right. get maybe four minute bursts of interviews at events. So they're not doing that. You saw this debate where people saw a very controlled, measured Kirsten Cinema. And to those of us who've known her for many years, uh, as I have, that's not the Kirsten Cinema we met, say, 15 years ago. Martha McSally, representing Tucson, is a newcomer to most folks. She right. represents a Tucson area district in southern Arizona. She's brand new and, ha at least until now, hasn't done much to introduce herself to the state as a whole. You talk to some people, Maria, and they say, I, I did She's attached herself more to President Trump than they ever thought she would. Right, absolutely. Earlier on, um, 2016 was not a huge, uh, not a not a big vocal Trump supporter during her primary, which was, of course, against Kelly Ward and the famous, infamous uh, former sheriff Joe Arpaio. We saw her move, uh, take a hard right there becoming more pro-Trump, more vocal about that. So now the question is, is that a good thing or bad thing? Because she's sort of defending on both sides. For those who, who want to see her move closer to Trump, right. she's playing that up. For moderates, where maybe that's a turnoff, she's right. trying to say that she's been consistent the whole time. All right, let's pull the lens back. I'll go 30,000 feet. Howard Feynman, Danny Pletka. Howard, I want to play a quick montage. Beto O'Rourke, the Bobby Kennedy of millennials, decided to go negative. <laughs> Um, right. Let me play a, a mashup of his uh, uh, of these of these hits on Cruz that they've unveiled today. Ted Cruz has voted to take away health care from millions of American families. He's tried repeatedly to roll back protections for pre-existing conditions at a time when nearly half of the school teachers in Texas are working a second job just to make ends meet. Ted Cruz wants to take our public tax dollars out of their classrooms, turn them into vouchers. He's vowed to deport every single dreamer. 
He's selling paranoia and fear instead of solutions. So, Howard, I was checking the calendar one more time. It's October 17th. Boy, that seems awfully late to decide to go to try to go contrast now. Yeah, I think so. I think Beto yeah, O'Rourke uh, may be uh, excited by his own charisma there and the response to his uh, anti-political campaign. Uh, decide a little late to do this. But uh, listen, in the big picture here, uh, the Democrats got to pick up one of these places. Mitch McConnell, you're in Arizona. Mitch McConnell sees Arizona as key. He's focused really his money and his attention almost more in Arizona than any other single state. Danny Pletka, I got to play for you another piece of the Phil Bredesen interview with Leanne because, and I want to remind people, Phil Bredesen said he would have voted yes on Kavanaugh. Now take a listen to what now he thinks has impacted him in this Senate race, Danny. I think what's happening is with, uh, with uh, the way in which the Kavanaugh hearings proceeded and sort of how much and how partisan they became and how bitter at the end, it tends to bring people kind of back to their party. Oh, yeah, I remember I'm a Republican. I remember I'm a Democrat. And I think that's, um, uh, that's happened all over the country, and it certainly has happened here in, here in Tennessee. Danny, he's basically hinting that him publicly saying yes, and we heard some reports that some volunteers quit over that, that even though he's from a red state, that actually it might have cost him more votes on the left than in the middle. Honestly, I can't, I can't say. You know, what we talked about in the wake of, of, of Kavanaugh was everybody kind of returning home. And I think that for a lot of Republicans who didn't like Donald Trump and were offended by Donald Trump, they were, they were even more offended by the Kavanaugh hearings. The same is probably true on the left for the Democrats, and that's what Bredesen is, is going to pay the price for. You know, you... It is not the time to triangulate. Unfortunately, elections aren't about nuance. And, and frankly, they aren't about how you're going to act in Washington. They're about playing to your home team and playing to your base. And he didn't do that. Speaking of the base, Howard Feynman, would you rather be Ted Cruz or Bob Menendez on Election Day? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Ted Cruz for now. I think, I think Menendez was... A distant star on the on the screen a few weeks ago, but people in the know in New Jersey were telling me that that was going to be a tough race. Uh, and it is about the people. It is about the the individual and who best represents the and can excite the base. Bob Menendez is going to have trouble, I think, exciting the base in New Jersey. And New Jersey likes moderate Republicans, and he's up against somebody who could at least style himself as a moderate Republican. I think he's in real trouble. And Danny Pleca, we heard the president um, in an interview say uh, that if Republicans lose control of the House, it's not on him. Um, is it, number one, um, or is he right that, you know, his presence is rescuing some candidates? I can tell you this, Martha McSally, if she wins, is probably going to owe, owe it to Trump. You know, I'm, I'm always wondering how Donald Trump earned that middle name, Mr. Helpful. <laughs> That's just such an incredible statement for the president to make. It, it suggests that, that he believes that the outcome is that we're, you know, that, 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 that his party is going to lose, is going to lose the House of Representatives. But I agree with you. I think that actually he's been pretty helpful to people like McSally and to others where he's gone out, he's rallied the base, he's rallied the crowds. And there's a reason why people like her are, in fact, standing with him to despite the fact that nationally he's just not that popular. Let me bring it back to Arizona uh, with, uh, with Bram and Maria here. First of all, Bram, you just gave me a stunning stat here that may give heartburn to everybody here. How many Senate races is the state of Arizona going to be home to in the next, uh, in the next uh, six years? Uh, including this year, we have eight Senate races through 2024. Eight U.S. Senate races. So... TV stations, congratulations, you're going to make a boatload of money. Because um, you got the McCain seat twice, 20 and, and then 22. This seat up again at 24. 24. Uh, are you a swing state? Uh, I think by then we will be. Uh, this year, not so sure. Uh, I think demographics will take hold at some point. Maria, does, this, does the state's political class sort of accept the idea that, hey, I guess we're becoming Florida and Ohio. We better get used to it. In terms of the demographic shifts or in terms of the tone of what we're I would saying? say more of the tone. I think the demographic shifts everybody's been watching for a while. But in tone, that, you know, that 
that they're in the national stage now. I think they are. As we were, I know we were chatting a little bit earlier, these uh, political attack ads are just ubiquitous right now. And we've heard a lot of complaints from people. But as a reporter, when I talk to voters, that's what they remember best. Even if um, they've outraged them, they know that it's, it's part of the game. They're paying attention to what they say, whether they're stopping at that point or fact checking. I know after the debate, there were a lot of requests for, for fact checks. They're paying attention. I was talking earlier about how Kavanaugh in Tennessee that, that may have backfired and Bredesen to say he was a yes on Kavanaugh, may have alienated. He didn't need to cast a vote. He didn't need to say anything. Was Kavanaugh one of those where this was a red-blue divide here and you, you, you couldn't, cross the, the, here, couldn't cross the swords? Here's something very interesting that came out in the debate the other night. Kirsten Sinema, as soon as it was, it was assured that Kavanaugh was going to uh, uh, be on the bench, uh, she issued a statement immediately saying uh, she would have voted no. But she does not want to say that on TV. She, you remember at the debate? Yes, we she pushed, pushed multiple to times to, to get say, an actual yes or no. To say I would have voted no. I interviewed her a week or two before that, not long after he, he was elevated. Would not say no. Hmm. It's a... Uh, She's also focused when she sort of defends that on him, uh, her impression that he lied under oath and less about the sexual assault allegations. I'll tell you this. We think Arizona's a swing state, but the two candidates are acting like it's a light red state. That's the, that's the message I've received from the two of you. Anyway, Bram and Maria, thanks for coming on. Great work. I know these campaigns are making it hard. There's nothing wrong with journalists. You let the journalists <laughs> interview you guys. Come on. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.